Leap of Faith episode. So, here we are. Topic of the day, could the Ass Creed clan actually survive their famous Leaps of Faith? No. But hey, that's just a theory. A game! Wait a minute. Come on, Matt Pat. Let's not jump into conclusions. <laughs> Get it? Because the video is about the leap of faith? Whatever. The leap of faith is a stunt performed by assassins in the Assassin's Creed game. In this stunt, the person in question jumps off a high structure and lands unharmed into a cushioning material. The video I showed you in the beginning belongs to a channel called The Game Theory, and in this video they try to find out if it's possible to perform the leap of faith in real life, without killing yourself. MadPad gets to the conclusion that the jump is almost impossible to perform, because according to his calculations, the acceleration of gravity in the Assassin's Creed world is far greater than the real one. So, in his line of thought, you would certainly die. There's only one problem with this logic. Even if he calculated the gravity in the Assassin's Creed world correctly, which I highly doubt, because he uses the time of the fall in the game measured by himself to do it. The gravity in the Assassin's Creed world is irrelevant to the problem, because if you try to do the leap of faith in real life, you have to deal with real gravity. So. Is the jump possible or not? Well, let's start by the beginning. The highest jump he approaches in the video is from the top of a real Italian building called Campanile di Giotto. Nailed it! This monument to verticality is 84 meters tall and its name translates directly to Giotto's bell tower. Hi, I'm Giotto. To find out how much time it takes the person jumping to get from the top of the building to the floor, we take the acceleration of gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared which means that for each second the person is falling. His speed increases 9.8 meters per second, or 35 kilometers per hour. Taking that into account, we just need to see how much time it takes to travel 84 meters. We get 4.17 seconds of falling time and a final speed of 146 kilometers per hour. But something important is missing. Wind resistance. But to include wind resistance, we need to know so many things, like the density of air, the drag coefficient, the frontal area of the jumper, his mass. Good thing we know all of those. The density of air at atmospheric pressure is 1.2 kg per cubic meter. The drag coefficient of a human falling with his tummy facing down is 1.3. Head dimensional. The frontal area of the average man is 0.95 meters square, and his mass is 75 kg. Plugging in the air resistance, the fall would take exactly 4.7 seconds and the assassin would reach the stack of hay at a speed of 27.7 meters per second, or about 100 kilometers per hour. To be sure this model predicts in a reasonable way what would happen in the real world, I must test it in a real situation. So I need to find a video on the internet of a person jumping from a high structure. What? You didn't expect me to jump, did you? Alright, let's search. Nope. The sandwich of justice nope. was first discovered. Ooh, this one is interesting. This video contemplates the stunt done at the Assassin's Creed movie, where Michael Fassbender's stunt double performs a jump from 38 meters of height. But I can't use the footage. It's not continuous. Ooh, this one is really cool. Gary Connery, the first man to land a windsuit without a parachute. Still, can't use it. Strong emotional response in most people, which... Here we go, this is the one. Lasso Chowler, a 27-year-old canoeer, jumps from the top of a cliff that's 59 meters tall generally say that a fall from any height greater than 100 feet or 30.5 meters is in the red zone. Unsurvivable. Well, you should tell Lasso that. It takes 3.58 seconds to get to the water and gets there at 123 kilometers per hour. Because he jumps in a vertical position, we have to change the frontal area to 0.1 meters square. With these new values, the model spits out 3.55 seconds of falling time and the final speed of 120 km per hour. 
taking into account that we don't know the exact weight and frontal area of our buddy Lasso. I risk to say the model is reasonably precise. Now that we know how fast the assassin gets to the floor, we need to know how aggressive the deceleration will be. In this specific jump, Ezio Auditori falls into a loose stack of hay inside of a car of wood. To know if he would survive the deceleration, it's important to determine the height of the bale of hay. From the game developers, we know that Ezio measures about 1.8 meters. Using his height as a scale and interpolating, we get that the height of the stack of hay is about 1.7 meters. Next, we need to know the deceleration per deformation ratio of the bale of hay. You see, most solid materials on this planet act a little bit like a spring and a little bit like a shock absorber. When they are pushed and deformed, they also push back. To know how the assassin will decelerate, I need to know how the stack of hay will react. Luckily, I found an article in which they test just that. Basically, there's two stages in the deformation of the bale of hay. In the first stage, all the air trapped inside of the hay is expelled. And then, in the second stage, the straws are deformed and break. From this article, I got the curve that shows the relation between the deceleration and deformation of the bale of hay. Plugging that into the mathematical model, we get that the jumper experiences a progressive deceleration that peaks at 56 Gs. That means 56 times the acceleration of gravity. That means 554 meters per second squared. That means... That means... What does that mean? Sudden acceleration or deceleration can cause serious problems to the human body. The list goes from nausea to broken bones and eyes popping out. The number of Gs an untrained human being can withstand depends on the direction and duration of the deceleration. For example, a hard slap on the face might reach hundreds of Gs but not do any real damage. According to a research conducted by the National Aeronautic and Space Administration <coughs> and I'm paraphrasing here. In exposures of longer duration, chimpanzee subjects have endured plateau accelerations of 56 Gs for 0.037 seconds and 43 Gs for 0110 seconds. It was later reported that the injury to these chimpanzee subjects ranged from moderate or none to severe shock and concussion. We can see in our results that the person falling from 84 meters and landing in a stack of hay only experiences a deceleration greater than 50 Gs for about 0.025 seconds, which is much lower than 0.037 seconds. And this deceleration is experienced in a perpendicular direction to our spine, what most of the times means less damage will be done. So, let's get to the point. Can or cannot a normal human being perform the leap of faith and then casually walk away just like in the game? The answer? Absolutely not! But take this into consideration. A normal human is not able to run 100 meters in 9.58 seconds. But Usain Bolt was. The leap of faith, as it's described in the game, is performed by highly trained people that need years to perfect the technique. And this specific jump is done by one of the most iconic characters in the game, Ezio Hauditori one of the most skilled assassins. So, my final answer is, the leap of faith as it happens in the game, with time, skill and a big pair of balls, is completely possible. Now, before I end the video, I would like to show you guys something. During my research for this video, I came across some internet articles that disproved that the jump was possible. In almost all of them, the source was the same scientific article published by four students from the University of Leicester. Allow me to point out everything that is wrong with this paper. They didn't consider air resistance. They used the bulk modulus in their calculations. The bulk modulus doesn't take into account plastic deformation and viscous damping. They assumed a deformation for the A-stack. They used the wrong criteria for the maximum Gs a person can walk away from. 56 meters per second is not the correct speed at which the person hits the A-stack. They calculated the height of the Cathedral of the Holy Cross at Acre by counting the time it takes the assassin to fall directly from the game. Which is highly inaccurate because the fall in the game is not in real time, it's animated. The initial height of the A-stack is not 1.5 meters, and this paper only has three bibliographic references, being that two of them are from the Wikipedia. Roasted. But on the other side, their mathematical calculations were impeccable. The Assassin's Creed game has a very interesting story. 
that merges with real events in human history. If you think that me making this video is just over analyzing something that was not built to be 100% real, just remember that in a lot of games, what makes the experience so immersive is this kind of attention to detail. In the game, they got to the trouble of inventing weapons like the Eden Blade, and they tried to make them as real as possible. In the first game, the only way to activate the blade was to flex your pinky finger like this. And as you can see, I can't do that without dragging along my ring finger as well, putting him right in the path of the blade. So, the only way to make this mechanism work was to get your ring finger off. And that's exactly what they did in the first game of the series. As you can see, Altair is missing his ring finger. Now, to end the video, I would like to leave you with something to think about. Bruce Wayne's goal is to keep the corruption out of Gotham. He uses creative weapons to fight his villains. He is able to perform daring stunts that an untrained human being would not be able to do. And he was trained by an organization called the League of Assassins. Do you think Batman is an assassin? Write your ideas in the comment section below. Until next time, thanks for watching. This tiny animal might seem cute at first glance, but don't be fooled by this demon. This pervert has sex nocular vision. <clears throat> Excuse me, that just means he has six different perspectives of view. Oh. We humans have two eyes. What gives us binocular vision? and also allows us to watch 3D movies.